What's going on, Raider Nation? Uh, coming to you today with a special guest on a new, I guess this is kind of a new platform. This is the first ever video podcast that I'm implementing. So if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. If you're listening to my podcast, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. We got both things going hand in hand. This thing should be premiering. So shout out to the live chat as well. Um, but joining me, the newest addition to the Raiders secondary, uh, former Louisiana Tech corner, and absolutely one of Raider Nation's favorite draft picks. This is Amik Robertson. What is up, dude? What's up, man? What's up? What's up, Raider Nation, man? I'm glad to be on the, on the podcast, man. What's up? I love it, man. I love the energy, man. You're bringing it on and off the field, man. I got to tell you, though, Amik, the reason I'm, I'm talking to you right now is I want to know a little bit about you. I can sit here on YouTube, you know, I can go and I can search all your highlight tapes, see what you're doing on the field, but I want to know about you, man. What what are you like, you know, outside of football? What do you do on your downtime? Um, honestly, man, outside of football is still football. You know, okay. um it's crazy when I'm not playing football, I'm still working on something dealing with football as far as training. Of course, I can do that all day. You know, I always try to perfect my craft and most importantly, you know, I like to spend time with my family, so I'm a very family you know, I like to be around my family a lot, you know, because cause they're the people that keep me going. Of course, I love the game of football, but my family kind of give me that extra edge, uh, you know, just to just to keep going, you know, just to continue yeah. prospering. I love it, man. I love it. Um, now, you know, I looked up a little bit about you. Uh, Louisiana pretty much uh, raised up through, I mean, what, high school, college? That's, yes, that's, that's your place, right, yes, Louisiana? Sir. Um, I, yes, sir. I lived in Thibodeau, Louisiana my whole life. Um, I mean, when I was young, you know, I moved to Houston, you know, due to the hurricane. That's why I found the love of football when I was five. When when I moved to Houston, my uncle put me into, you know, Little League football, and I fell in love with the game ever ever since. You know, moved there back to go. Thibodeau, um, went to Thibodeau High School, um, and ended up going to Louisiana Tech. Wasn't highly recruited, but, you know, it is what it is, you know, because of, of my size. I've been going through that my my whole life so my goal was to always play bigger man play with that extra edge so you know here i am today man you know i'm proud to be part of the las vegas raiders that's what i'm talking about man and we're going to get into that man i want to talk about you a little bit but um right now i kind of want to go back i want to start with your with with your college days i want to kind of hit on this real quick um and as a freshman man as a freshman in college you're over there at louisiana tech and you guys make it to the Frisco Bowl, right? And that right there yes, is a big that's a big game for young Amik right there, the Frisco no doubt, Bowl no as doubt, a freshman, no right? So you walk away from that game as defensive MVP of that game. Now, was that where you, you know, things kind of started clicking like, look, I might make something of this football thing. Honestly, honestly it was just for me, man, I went into the game, you know, I was a guy that took preparation very serious. I take the game like I said, I take the game of football very serious. Um, coming into the game, I didn't leave my hotel room, didn't go out and party. I look at it as business, man. And yeah. I didn't really think of it as, oh, this is a game. I'm a, I'm a ball out or whatever, whatever. I just wanted to win. You know, they send the seniors out, you know, um, with another bowl win, you know. So, um, yeah. I did whatever I had to do, you know, to put ourselves in a position to win, to win that game. And, and, but I tried to prepare like way before. So during the game, man, I just left it all out there, man. I didn't know, I didn't. Yeah, anything about the defensive MVP or none of that. I just went out there and played my tail off, man. Wanted to win for those seniors, and um, a, a fortunate guy, you know, was able to bless me with the with the defensive MVP. You know, I just did my job and went went out there and and played my own part. Man, I love it. I mean, we're we're just barely starting this interview, man. I just you're just vibing on me. You're vibing the energy. I love it. Um, <laughs> man, you, you you closed out your college career, man. This is this is what's awesome, man. You closed out your college career, uh, named first team All American by the Football Writers Association of America. Um, might I add, it seems like maybe LSU might have missed out on a good homegrown talent, man. Would you agree? Um, I, I mean, you know. I- I follow guys playing, man. You know, everyone makes mistakes at, at the time. It's it's a business, and I I understood my process. Maybe they did, maybe they, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. You know, um, it's it's all good, man. You know, yeah. God put me at Louisiana Tech for for a reason. I love it. That's that's the perfect answer right there for you, man. Now, uh, obviously, now after that, you're leading up to the draft process, and I'd say obviously you probably had a little bit like you know roller coaster of emotions even through the actual day of the draft. Um, can you no like? Doubt. Take me through it, man. Like the pre-draft process, were you able to, you know, stay healthy through it? And and what, you know, was there anything that surprised you that like happened or didn't happen? Obviously, you know, with the world half shut down, things are a little different. But walk me through the process, man. What was going through your head? I would say um, the beginning of the process was it was smooth at first, man. You know, um, after after our last game, well, really 
coming into the bowl, you know, bowl weeks, you know, um, we faced Miami. And like a couple of practices before, you know, I knew something. I played four games with this with this groin injury, but I didn't. I think I thought it was, you know, my body probably needed some rest, or it was just a strain or whatever. So I played four games with it, but it just got worse and worse. So I didn't want to go out there and, and jeopardize my teammates, man, or jeopardize myself. Because once you're out there, you don't have no excuses. So, you know, mm-hmm. I, I sat down with my coaches, man, sat down with my with my teammates and told them, what, what, you know, what, what I was going to do. And they understood it, man. You know, I had to get healthy. And, you know, I went back home to go, to go, you know, go see see doctors to see what the problem really was. And unfortunately, I ended up having to have surgery. I had a um, I had an injury called ischiatic pubis, is like a partial tear in my groin. So once I, you know, once I got situated with with that, you know, um, the process started for us training at MJP, for us training at MJP, and um, you know, it was kind of devastating for me because my goal was to always want to want to be able to, you know, um, perform at the high, at a um, high level, at the high stage for us going to the NFL combine. But, course, you know, yeah. guys, guys set me down, man. You know, um, he wanted me to get healthy and, and you know, get at, so I could be able to be at my full potential. And um, something that kind of, kind of, you know, kind of almost broke me down, man, was probably how far I dropped in the draft because people didn't think mm-hmm. I was, I was healthy, you know. But I've been, I mean, I was, I got released before the combine. I told my agent, like, you know, yeah. let me just go out there and let's, let me just do the individual drills, you know, so people can know that I'm healthy, that I can move just as good, if not better than everybody in the country, you know. Um, but he was like, nah, we're just going to wait till the pro day, unfortunately. With the virus, the pro day ended up getting canceled. So th- that was kind of, you know, I, I kind of took that tough pilot. You know, I, it, that was kind of hard on me too because I couldn't really show people or, or the scouts that I was that I was healthy, you know. And, and that's why yeah. I think I kind of fell fell far into the draft, man, but it's all good. I, you know, I fell into, I fell to a great organization and, 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 and I pray every, you know, ever since the draft, man, I prayed every night and, and, you know, just, just for the opportunity that God gave me in the greater organization because they believed in me and I most definitely, you know, will make sure that they don't regret, you know, picking me, you know, so it's all good, yeah. man. I mean, like I said, I'm in the best position. I love it. So the way you're feeling right now, that's a, that's an underdog mentality right there, right? No doubt. No doubt. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. And good stuff, man. You're betting on yourself. The Raiders are betting on you. Raider Nation's rolling with you, man. Um, and, and this underdog mentality, man, it's crazy. I'm sitting here. I could use underdog on you, and you're coming in here with 14 interceptions, 34 passes yeah. defense, 23 tackles for loss. I'm not done yet. 265 interception return yards, three forced fumbles, two fumble recoveries, and three touchdowns. Dude kind of underdog is that man you got you got some ball skills and you said it what are you you five eight five nine how tall are you but they got me at five, I, well i thought i was five nine but they got me at five eight and a half but it's all, uh, good. It's all uh, good we'll, we'll give you five nine you're five nine that's cool man we got we got five nine man you're like 190 whatever it is but dude you go out there you play like you're six three two twenty man I, I i gotta give it to you man we're, we're excited for what's in store i that's, i mean i just feel like that's what i gotta do man you know that's what i gotta do in order you know, for me to separate myself, I I have to play bigger. You know, I um yeah, that's just me. You know, I I just yeah. I just have to play bigger in order to be successful in you know playing the game of football. Good stuff. Now we're gonna close this thing out real quick with just a few topics on the Raiders, man. Uh, first thing I just want to ask, I imagine. You know, you probably had multiple combos with John Gruden and Mike Mayock yes, at this sir. point. Now, I just want to know what what was your first impression of your coach, man? What was your first impression impression of John Gruden? Man, the first impression, I mean, I was watching some YouTube videos last night, man, to see <laughs> kind of, because he seems so energetic, but we yeah. kind of, we kind of, I, I kind of could relate to it, because I, man, when, when I talked on the phone with him, he was like, hey, I need somebody to bring some juice, like, in my mind, I'm like, you got the right guy, but I couldn't really express it to him, because it's so much relief and anger was built up, man, with that mm. conversation, you know, well, during that conversation, because I had felt like, I thought that I wasn't gonna get the opportunity that I needed, but when yeah. talking to him, man, the first man, he, he, man, like it's like I could feel a connection. I feel like we were meant to. I was meant to be part of that organization, and he was meant to be the, you know, he was meant to be the coach there, you know. So I ain't gonna lie, man, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful feeling, you know. I can't, like I said, man, I just can't stop saying. I just can't wait to show Raider Nation that they didn't make a mistake on me. There we go. That's the, that's the attitude and the mentality we want. I'm sure the listeners and the viewers are getting fired up right now. Now, also shout out to Mike Mayock, man. He's been he's been excellent, you know, through his his first two drafts. No um, doubt. And, and, no and doubt. because of his process, no man, he wasn't gonna let you fall any further. You know what I mean? Mike Mayock, uh, 
he, he was he wasn't gonna let you fall any further man he, that was uh he fell in your lap man he couldn't pass on you um and i absolutely love it so hats off to mike mayock but i do want to bring up now um some of your teammates and i know i've heard actually i think i, I watched one of your conversations i know uh, your friends with, with jonathan abram tell me about your relationship man with with jonathan abram me and john me and jonathan abram go way back man probably like you know we played against each other we, we played against each other in college twice um i think my junior year i mean no, my sophomore year when we played them at mississippi state man he's a guy that's flying around the field like yeah. You know, and you, you, and you know, like, man, he's different. He's like a bigger me. He's a yeah. bigger me, you know. I mean, <laughs> me and him talk about this all the time. I tell him that, you know, um, I probably got more hands and, and ball skills than him, but he, sometimes he's not running about catching the ball. He's running about, about knocking people out. You know? so, <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, I tell him all the time, you know, but he's like a big brother to me, man. And um, matter of fact, I talked to him yesterday. You know, he's trying to, you know, um, get the installs with me for as you know, get me ahead of time with the playbook. So once I get in there, man, it's about competing, you know. So and that's go. what it's all about, you know. But for as John, man, that's a, yeah, that's a, me and him have a great relationship. That's that's like a big brother to me. That's good stuff, man. You, I mean, Abram, even our, our first round pick, our net. Man, we're getting some young bulls over there on defense. I'm excited, man. And no even doubt. since no you're doubt. talking about playing with guys in college, I, I saw some uh, tape and a few pictures of you playing up against our one of our third round picks. Uh, Brian Edwards this past year, man. You yeah, remember that matchup? Yeah, yeah, Good. yeah. I, I remember. I think that was my freshman year. We went, oh. we, we went head to head, man. It was crazy. That was my freshman year. You know, when it's crazy when you out there competing, you don't realize how good people are. Like, yeah. you know, me. He was out there competing, man. He ended up getting the best of me. Like three, like eleven seconds left, man. He caught a circus catch, you know, um, and it was able to kick a field goal and win the game, man. That kind of broke me. That kind of broke me, man, as a, as a freshman. And ever since then, I started high playing balls. Like, you know, ever since then, so yeah. he kind of taught me something. To, instead of waiting for the ball to come to you, man, you got to go get it, you know. So, um, yeah, I ain't going to lie. We, we got to steal with him, man. I kind of watched the tape after, you know, after the draft was over. I kind of watched the tape. I'm like, he looks so familiar. I remember going against him, you know. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. We got to steal out of him. We got to steal. I love it. Now you get to use that in camp. You're going to use it in practice. You're going to be able to work with him quite a bit. No now, doubt. No uh, doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Man, good stuff, man. We're going to close this thing out. That was it. Um, and, and look, let me tell you, first off, I'm glad I was able to introduce you, man, to Raider Nation. And and we're all here pulling for you. Like, I know you looked at that draft stock and you looked at that number um, and, the, and there was a rage of emotions that came out of that. But trust me, it don't matter. You could have been, I mean, seventh round. You could have been undrafted free agent. Um, we're pulling for you. We like your attitude. That's why I wanted to get you on here, man, because I've watched some of your stuff. I've watched your interviews. Uh, you're a dog, man. You, I mean, like I said, I mean, I'm vibing off. You got me all fired up right now in the middle of the day doing nothing. You know what I mean? Like I'm ready to just like run through the wall. I ain't even going to open the door on the way out the room. I'm just going to run through the wall on the way out. Um, I, I, I'm pumped, man. And, and we all look forward to watching you grow, man, and, and proving us right, proving those doubters wrong because you got 31 uh, NFL teams out there to go uh, tear up now. Um, and Amik, no brother, you know, we're going we're gonna to keep in touch. But like I said, thanks again, and I look forward to your future, bro. Thank you guys, man. Thank you guys. Dark side. Dark side, man. Thank you so much.